Hello and welcome back to a new video in which we will talk about transporters in free space. In Inelogic, normally you drag and drop walls and nodes, the walls will act as obstacles and the areas or nodes will act as restricted areas or destination or origin points for the transporters to move around. But you can also import information from Excel or a database that contains everything you need from the walls and the nodes to be able to generate your layouts programmatically in any logic. Moreover, you can mix these programmatically created layouts with the layouts that you drag and drop. And this is what we're going to talk about on this video. So let's get started. So the first thing we would need to do is to add our layout elements uh, or markup elements programmatically instead of dragging and dropping them. So I added this function in order to create my nodes which are going to be rectangular nodes for now. This function is going uh, to read uh, the details related to these nodes from the database uh, through an Excel sheet. So uh, the user will be able to specify the position and the dimension of these nodes in this Excel sheet, which in turn will be transformed into a database that will be used in the model. So to do that, of course, we need to import the Excel sheets uh, as a database table. And this database is going to be used by this function in order to set up these uh, nodes programmatically. So if we go back to this sheet, you will notice that what we need from the user is the X, Y and Z position of the nodes as well as its width and height. And that's it. That is all they will need to um, provide. And based on that, our nodes are going to be created. I would like to note here that usually or normally users uh, uh, would want to uh, define these info in meters or any other unit of length. So of course we can easily do that. They can insert their info in meters for example and we can do this transformation in any logic use, uh, using the appropriate functions such as the two pixels function. Uh, but now just for simplicity we are inserting these uh, coordinates and dimensions in pixels directly in the excel sheet. So as you you can see the uh, the function will iterate through the database and uh, will create a new rectangular node and then will set the position for this node as well as the size of this node and finally I'm going to add our nodes into a collection uh, this is a linked hash map because uh, I need to give uh, my nodes an ID in order to be able to use them later so this is what we will do we will uh, add an ID and uh, the node to this collection this ID can also be part of our Excel sheet, so it can also be something that uh, the user can specify. And it doesn't really have to be a number, it can be anything including a name, for example. So the user might want to identify these nodes by names instead of numbers. So it's simply an identifier for these nodes that the user can specify in whatever format needed. So in the same way, you can add functions for all the other markup elements that you need to add for your layout. So for example, here, I also added a function to create my walls as well as the collection that is going to contain these walls. Now, in order to check out how to programmatically construct all your markup elements, if you can't find the relevant info that you need in the documentation, you can always refer to the API reference. So you can go to any logic help to the API reference and here you will search for the element that you need to construct, for example, the wall. Now, sometimes you might find that the constructor for this element is deprecated, like this case, for example. That's why we're not going to actually use this constructor to construct our wall. But uh, this can still be used just for inspiration in order for you to know uh, what elements you will need to initialize for you to construct your uh, markup element. For example, if you notice here, we have these markup segments, which are the segments that the wall are going to be made up of. So if we go further into inside this markup segment, we will notice that we have the markup segment line. 
and if we go to the markup segment line we will finally notice what are the um, info we need from the user in order to be able to construct the wall now another method that can be really helpful to discover how a certain element is constructed in any logic is actually to take a look behind the scenes uh, at the uh, java code that is constructed by any logic uh, related to any element so to do that you can simply open a new model and draw the element that you want to investigate about so for example now i'm going to draw the wall because uh, this is the element that we are trying to construct now so we are talking now about the normal wall not the rectangular wall the rectangular wall and concept should be very similar to the rectangular nodes now make sure you build your model and after that you can go to the agent in which the wall is contained in right click and here open with java editor now here you will find a bunch of code but you need to search for the code specifically related to the wall that we drew so for example here you can find the code that creates an array of the markup segment lines that are going to constitute our wall along with uh, the needed uh, info such as the coordinates and the dimensions if we go back to our excel sheet uh, this is the info that we need uh, to construct the wall. So, since the wall is made up of segments, we will need the first point uh, coordinates of the segment and the second point coordinates of the segment. So we have the first point x, y, and z and the second point x, y, and z in addition to the height of this wall. So we will uh, again iterate through these info in the database in order to construct our wall. And then we are going to end by a final step because our walls can be made up of one or more segments we are going to use the array stream method which will add these segments to all our walls before initializing them so for any other markup element that you might need such as maybe target lines or paths uh, you can always refer to the api reference or uh, use the method that i showed you in order to understand the details regarding the construction of these elements now that we have defined our markup elements the nodes and the walls what we need to do next is to add them to the level of the agent in which we want them to exist now for the case of the nodes we will also need to create a network work uh, that is made up of these nodes so usually when we drag nodes and uh, specifically when they have paths between them uh, any logic directly creates uh, a network uh, from these nodes so in our case we are going to do that step uh, uh, programmatically so that's why i added this function in which i'm going to create my network add the nodes to the, this network and then add this network as well as the walls to the level in the main so first i create this network programmatically and i called it my network and then after that we are going to call the functions that are going to create the nodes and walls and following that we are going to iterate through the um, nodes in the collection and add these nodes to the network and then we will add this network to the level which is the already existing level in the main and finally we are going to iterate through the walls in this collection and also add them to the level so the the most important thing for you to uh, know is that any markup element that you add programmatically you have to add it to the existing level and the agent that you want these markup elements to appear and this is what we did here now what we are going to do is just to call this function on the startup of the model okay so now if we try to run the model you will notice that this won't work and we will get an error indicating that the markup element is already initialized and cannot be modified meaning that the level has already been uh, initialized and we cannot add anything to it now there's a little trick that we are going to do in order to solve this error instead of calling this function on startup i'm going to add a variable let's call it my level and this is going to be of type level and in that case my function i want it to return a value of type level so it is going to return the level we are working with which is the level already indicated in the main and then we will specify this level 
as the initial value of this variable. Okay, so I'm going to remove this from the startup. So using this little trick, by adding this variable of type level and specifying its initial value as the level returned by this function now if you run the model you will see that this will work and we will see the walls and the nodes that we have indicated in the database or in the excel sheet okay so now let's test our uh, elements so in order to do that i added a transporter type and i also added an object which is just a simple box and I prepared this uh, very simple uh, process where uh, the transporters are going to pick up the box and move it from one node to the other. Now the idea here is uh, that we need to specify the nodes that we need our transporters to move from and to. So remember for our nodes we have added an ID for each of our nodes. So what we are going to do is that we are going to choose our nodes based on these IDs. So I prepared this function that uh, takes this ID and simply returns the node that is connected to this ID in this linked hash map. So to do that, the first we need to specify the uh, home location of the fleet of our transporter fleet. So we will just use the function and specify here the ID of the node that we want. So I, I added two parameters. One is the home node and the other is the destination node uh, where they are going to move the object. Uh, so this one will have an ID of one and the other one will have an ID of two. So remember in our nodes, we have only two nodes, one that has an ID one and another one that has an ID two. Okay, so going back here, I'm going to specify the ID, which is the home node parameter. Okay, that's it. So I have specified the home node of these transporters as the first node. Now here, we need also to specify the, uh, the pickup location and the destination node. So here, I'm going to specify the pickup location as the same node as the home node of the transporters. And for the destination, I'm going to specify the other node, which is the destination node. And that's it. This way, through using this function and this linked hash map, we just provide the ID of the node, and this will uh, specify the node that we need in each location. So let's run the model to see this. So as you can see, our transporters start from their home node, which is this node, which has an ID of one. And then they are going to pick up the boxes and move them to the other destination node, which is this one. And as you can see, these walls that we have added programmatically are being recognized by the transporters and these transporters are avoiding these walls. And just to note that I have, I have specified uh, the navigation type as a free space type. Now the interesting thing about this method or the good thing about it is that it allows you to flexibly mix between uh, elements that are programmatically added as well as elements that you can just uh, add by dragging and dropping. So for example, if I want to use this node as the home node of the transporters uh, instead of the one that I defined programmatically, I can do that. So in the transporter fleet here, I'm going to define my node as this one. So if we run the model now, this works very well. And this is simply because we have added uh, all our uh, programmatically defined uh, element to the same level which was already uh, present in the main. And this is why uh, we can easily mix between these two items. So another thing that we can also try in order to check this out, I'm just going to add this point node. So this point node has four, uh, X as 470 and Y as 390. So what I'm going to do now is instead of specifying the destination as one of the programmatically added nodes that we had uh, added, so I'm going to choose X, Y, Z. Okay, and I'm just going to add the X, Y location of this point. So 470 and 390. 
okay and z equal to zero so as you can see here uh, when we choose the x y z as the destination we are uh, prompted to uh, specify the level at which this uh, point exists so if we if we see here we have two options which are level and my level which are essentially the same thing so i'm going to choose my level just to show that this will work because everything for now exists in the same level okay so again our transporters are located in this home node they will pick up the boxes from this node and then go to this one and this happens smoothly and without any problems because we are at the end of the day using the same level for all our markup elements the one that are being done programmatically as well as the ones that we are adding uh, with the usual method by dropping dragging and dropping